Yar, Marty's. I be Michael, and this be to can play that game. And today we be looking at Black Fleet. <coughs> <coughs> okay, that's enough of that. But cut this cool. Ha. Uh, well, let's just put that away for now. So yes, today on to can play that game. I am starting to look at Black Fleet. Now, today's video, I will be doing the how to play Black Fleet, and that will actually include rules that are not in the rule book. And this is a two player variant that me and my wife play. So what I will be having is the standard rules as given in the rule book for how to play this. And then at the end of the video, I will explain how the variant I've created for two players actually works. And then there will also be a next video that will be a playthrough of Black Fleet and that will be using the two player variant. And then the third video in my series on Black Fleet will of course be my review of Black Fleet where you can find out my thoughts and opinions on it. And I'll talk a bit about that rule variant that I use and other possibilities you could use that you might find more to your liking. As always, let's start with taking a look at the box here and identifying what Black Fleet is. Well, as you can see, we have a kind of piratey looking guy, some sailing ships, some water. So not surprising, this is about adventure on the high seas. And the nature of the game is a pickup and delivery game with some special powers thrown into the mix that kind of make the game much more random than it would otherwise be. Now that might not sound too interesting, but why don't we take a closer look at the table and I can teach you how to play Black Fleet. Welcome to the table for how to play Black Fleet. Now, as normal, let's talk about the first thing, which is the goal of this game. And the goal of this game is to get enough money to pay the ransom for the governor's daughter. Now, the way this will work is that you will have development cards that give you special powers and you'll have values ranging from five and then 14. And you'll need to buy all of your development cards that are giving you special powers. And then you can buy the ransom for the governor's daughter. Now, there are two options for which card to use for this governor's daughter. The suggestion is that if you want a shorter game, that you use the 10 value ones. If you want a longer game, you'll use the 20 value ones. So to buy these cards, you will need to get doubloons and you will be getting doubloons by sinking opponent's ships and by delivering goods that you'll be picking up from the various ports. So let's now talk about how you set this up. Well, first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to get this board out. And this board is single-sided, it is just black on the back side. So it's very easy to just set out and get on with. Once you've got the board out, you'll need to put your navy ships out. Now, these are the purple and yellow ships, and there are spaces on the board. So there's a picture of a purple ship and a picture of a yellow ship, and that will be the starting locations for the navy ships. Then you're gonna to need to separate all your lovely little wooden cubes into the different colors. Once this is done, you'll put them in the various ports. So up here, we have the blue, the yellow in that corner, green in this corner, red on the side here, and then finally purple down here. And that is then the board set up. Next, you'll need to start on the individual player setups. 
So I mentioned a moment ago about these development cards. So what you're going to need to do is separate these cards that have these pictures on them that when you lay them out next to each other, make a picture corresponding in scene as they go up in value. And once you have these split out, you'll want to shuffle them. And these all have different special abilities on, not just different for the value, but they are also all different within that. So once you have shuffled them, you'll then deal one to each player and then just put the rest back in the box. And then of course you'll do the same for your eights, your elevens, and your fourteens. Now you'll keep these secret from your opponents, but you are allowed to look at them yourself. Once you have given out your development cards, you will then need to give each player their governor's daughter card. And as I've already said, you'll pick whether or not you want to use the 10 point value cards or the 20 point value cards. So we'll just put 10 points. There's no need to shuffle these. They are all exactly the same. So once everyone has those, you'll then want to shuffle up the ship cards. These have pictures of the various different colors of ships on and the black one is noted as first player. And on the back, you can see they have a picture of a tavern that will join as part of the picture formed by the other cards. So you'll shuffle these up and deal one to each player. And then whoever has the first, the black ship the, that says first player, they'll be your first player. It's that easy for determining first player. And then of course, from there, play will just go clockwise round the table to the rest of the players. So once each player knows what color ships they are, they'll want to get the two ships of their color. So here we have the gray ships and they'll put those in front of them. And the different ships you have here, you have the little one is your pirate ship and that has space for one cube in it that sits at the back of the ship as so. And the other one you have is your merchant ship, which is the bigger one and has space for three cubes, one in the front and then two in the back. So once each player has their ships, you'll need to get the fortune cards. And these are the ones with the blue back that have a picture of a ship on. Now, these cards are special power cards. There are lots of different ones, so I'm not gonna go through what they all do. Um, but in general, these allow you to break the rules of the game in some way. So it might be additional movement, it might be acting multiple times, it might be moving multiple ships. There are lots of different ones in here. And you'll want to shuffle these up and sit them near the board to be a draw pile. Once you've done this, each player will draw one card that they'll get to look at and have sat in front of them. But of course, that they will keep secret from the other players. And then you'll get the final deck of cards. And this is your navigation deck. And it has a picture of a compass on it and a map. And again, you'll just want to shuffle these up and then deal two to each player. And these will need to sit near the board to be a draw deck throughout the game. As I've already said, the first player will be the player with the black ships as their card does denote first player on it. And starting with that player, they will take their merchant ship and choose one of the five ports to put their ship in. So for example, this black ship will go here and as we put it in the port, it immediately will load up with goods. So we'll put three blue cubes in here. Then play would progress clockwise round the table with each player doing the same. So let's say it's grey next and they choose to put their ship in this green port here. And we then fill them up 
with cubes and it would progress as so until each player had placed their merchant ship. You may have noticed that the pirate ships still are not on the board and that is normal, that is how they start. On your turn you will move them in to onto the board from one of these far sea spaces marked with the arrows. And that is the game all set up and you are ready to start playing. So let's now talk about the structure of each player's turn and of course we'll be starting with this black player's turn. So the actions you'll be resolving is playing your movement card and that is one of these navigation cards with the map on. You'll then move your ships in accordance with that card and also play any fortune cards that you wish to play and there is no limit on the number of fortune cards you can play. Then once you are finished moving all of your ships you will draw a replacement navigation card. Now if you had played a navigation card that has symbols on saying plus fortune cards then you would additionally draw that many fortune cards and of course if you had next you'd have to discard a fortune card. Once you have drawn back up you may then choose to purchase one of your development cards and of course this is important as this will be how you win the game and when you buy it you'll just pay the number of doubloons listed on the bomb to the bank so we have 5, 8, 11, 14 and 10. You cannot, you cannot buy your victory point card, the governess's daughter, Ransom, until you have bought all the other four. And when you buy them, you'll simply flip them over and from that point onwards, you'll gain the benefit of that power. So let's talk in more detail about playing a movement card. So in your hand, you will always start your turn with two movement cards and you'll need to decide which one you play. So the things to note of importance here is the top line is your naval ship and this will be color coded either purple for the purple ship or yellow for the yellow ship. Now unfortunately there is no symbology if you are color blind. The number next to that will then denote how many spaces you can move that ship. So let's say I was playing this card here, which has a purple naval ship movement of one. I would then be able to move that purple ship one. If, however, I had played this one that has the yellow ship on with a value of two, I would be able to move the naval ship two spaces. If on moving that naval ship I encountered an enemy pirate, so let's say it is the black player's turn and the white pirate ship is in this space here. And I play this navigation card that gives two movement to the yellow naval ship. They can then move one, two spaces and each ship is allowed to do one action. So for these naval ships, there is only one action they can do and that is sink a pirate ship. As I say, it's important to note that you can only do one action. So if I had played this card and there were two pirates next to where the naval ship ended up, I could not choose to sink both. I could only sink one as each one would be an action. Each time I sink an opponent's pirate ship with my navy ship, that will be then be taken off the board. If you had a situation where, say this brown one had a blue piece of cargo in its hold and I sunk it, that blue good would just go back to the blue port and the brown player would take their ship back in front of them and then on their turn it would be able to come back onto the board from one of these brown arrow spaces. As well as that, for sinking that ship I would receive two doubloons. 
So then the next line on your navigation card, and this is marked by a skull and crossbones to help make it clear, is your pirate ship. So let's keep looking at the card we have here, which is this one here, which gives free movement to the pirate ship because that is the number next to the pirate ship. I would then be able to move my pirate ship free spaces. Now, this being the black player's first turn, obviously the ship is not on the board yet because they don't start on the board. So with this free movements spaces, I would be able to choose either of the three entry points. So there's one down in this corner, one up in this corner, and one up in this corner to start from. So I would simply place my ship there and then I would move onto the board. So I would go one, two, three, and the spaces are clearly marked with dotted lines. It's important to note that obviously you cannot move on land, only on the blue sea spaces. So let's say that there was a merchant ship of an enemy player that was here. So it's the black player's turn and we have this gray player on the board here. And my pirate had a movement of three, so he moves on the board. One, two, three. Now, because he is adjacent to this merchant ship, my pirate ship may attack it as an action. And what that would mean is that I would take one good from the merchant ship and place it in my pirate ship. And as well as getting that good, I would also receive two doubloons for doing this. But what do I then do with this good? Well, what I would need to do is take it to a beach. So let's say that I robbed the grey and then the grey ran off with his tail between his legs and I then wanted to move to this beach. And you can tell the beaches because they have little brown circles and a shovel on and a number. And as an action, you can choose to bury a good that your pirate has on an island, which will then return it to that colour port and give you that number of doubloons. However, it's important to note, if we had a situation where, say, the grey had been here, so we have the grey player here, and I've just moved my pirate ship here and attacked the grey and taken his good. I'm now on the space where the beach is. However, because I used my action to attack the merchant, I can't then in that same turn bury that treasure. I would have to wait until a later turn in order to do that. Also, when you have a good in your hold, you cannot attack a merchant for the sake of attacking a merchant. You must get rid of that good before you can attack a merchant again. The final thing I want to talk about with this pirate is let's say I attacked and I got rid of that green good in this island and then for some reason the grey ship just stayed there which is highly unlikely but let's say it did and I just kept attacking it and I took the second good and I buried that and I got the doubloons for burying that, leaving this grey ship with just one good. If I then attack it again and take that last good that it had, this grey merchant ship would then be sunk. So much like with the pirate ship being sunk, what would happen is this merchant would go back in front of that player until their turn. Let's just say that this black player did just sink the grey player's merchant ship, and it's now the grey player's turn. So their merchant ship is not on the board, and what that means is they can just choose a port, place it there, and load it with three cubes. Much like when you're setting up the game. 
So I've talked about the Navy ship, I've talked about the pirate ship. There's one ship on these cards, on these navigation cards, that I have not yet mentioned. And that is, of course, the merchant ship. And what the merchant ship is trying to do is go from port to port delivering goods. So whenever you are empty of goods and you go into a port, you will automatically fill up with goods. However, if you say we're missing one good, I couldn't then go back to the blue port and fill up that one missing good. I would have to do my delivery of just two before I can then fill up with any other goods. So much with the other ships, we have here a movement value and you would just move a number of spaces, as I've said, marked by the dotted line, equal to that value. Now, merchant ships do not sink ships. So obviously we talked about how our Navy ships here want to sink our pirate ships and how our pirate ships want to sink our merchant ships. But the merchants have no offensive capability. They will not be sinking. However, let's talk about a situation where this black player has managed to get all the way down to this purple port with his blue goods. When you reach a port, you are able to trade the goods that you have there. And you'll get a number of doubloons per good equal to the number stated for that color in the port. Now, not every port has every color of good on. This is because of how close they are. For example, purple and yellow are very close to each other, so they are not found in each other's ports because the goods are not valued there. So let's go back to the fact that we have this black player with his free blue goods gone into the purple port. Because blue is worth three doubloons each there, going into that port, he would immediately offload those goods which would then go back to their home port and he would get nine doubloons. And additionally, he would automatically refill with the goods from that port, so purple. So of course, as well as moving your ships, you would be able to play fortune cards. Now, I'm not gonna go through these, as I've said, because there are so many and they'll clearly state when they would apply on the card. So the next thing I want to talk about is once you have played your movement cards and moved all your ships and we've gone through how those different ships move, you would then draw back up. So every turn you will always be drawing one of the navigation ones because you'll need to replace the card spent. But then we also have for some cards, so we can see this card here, does not have anything at the bottom, so you would not need to discard or draw any fortune cards for that one. However, this one has the greedy little pirate and a plus sign, and then a picture of two fortune cards. So when drawing up, you would draw two cards. Now that is only if this was the card you chose to place. Additionally, we have this card here that has the X over the fortune card. If you played that as your navigation card, you would then have to discard a fortune card from your hand to the fortune card discard pile. You would get to choose which card you discard. And of course, if you don't have any, you can ignore the effect of this. One final thing with drawing up is that with these fortune cards, there is a hand limit of three fortune cards. So if you would be drawing more than that, you would draw up, you would draw the full amount and then discard the cards of your choice so that you only had three in your hand. Also, when either of the decks run out and you would need to draw more cards, then just shuffle the discard pile as in most games and that becomes your draw pile. So after you've drawn back up, then you can buy development cards. Now, I did already talk about this, uh, but it's important to go through it again because you can buy the development cards in any order with one exception. And that is, of course, the 10 point or 20 point 
Governor's Daughter's Ransom card. That's the end game card. You can only buy that once you've bought your four other power cards. And of course, you can only buy one development card a turn, no matter how many doubloons you have. Even if you had enough to buy them all in one go, you could still only buy the one. So that would then be the end of your turn. And with your turn over, play would proceed clockwise to the next player. So game would progress like that with each player taking their turn, sinking ships, stealing cargo, burying cargo, trading cargo, until someone buys the end game card, the governor's daughter's ransom. Now, when that card gets turned over by a player, that triggers the final round, and the round will end at the end of the player to the right of the first player. So the first player is always going to be the black ship. So if we went clockwise round the table and it would be the black ship's turn again and someone's played that, then that's the end of the game. Now, of course, this means that if you are the black player and you buy the end game card, every other player will always have another turn. But if you're the player to the right of the black player and you buy this, then no one else will get another turn. Also, because you play out the round, it's possible that the black player bought their end game card and then when the rest of the round was playing out, the white player also bought their end game card. So the fact that the black player bought their card first is irrelevant because it was in the same round. So in this situation, you have a tie and to break that tie, whoever has the most money wins. Of course, if you're still drawing even on money, then you have a draw, unfortunately. So that is how you play the official rules for Black Fleet. Now, of course, this is to can play that game. And according to the box for this, you can only play with three or four players. So why am I talking about it? Well, because I play a house rule variant that allows for two players. And I will talk more about the process of this and other options that you may choose to play instead in my review. So be sure to check that out. But just to briefly go through the variant that me and my wife play and that will be in the playthrough. The changes are when you are dealing out the ship cards, you will still shuffle them as normal, but you'll deal two to each player. Also, you will still only have one set of development cards per player, not one set per ship. Additionally, any development cards you buy apply to both colors of ship. So here we have a situation where one player is black and white and the other player is gray and brown. Now in this situation, black is still the first player. However, it wouldn't work as with normal black fleet because what would happen is black would take their turn and then it would go to the other player they wouldn't get to choose which ship they wouldn't be moving them all as if they were one but what they would do is they would go okay so i take the gray turn that's the next turn then it's back round to me and i have to use my white ship because i already used my black ship and then i've done my white turn and it would be the other player's brown ship turn and then with the brown ship having gone it would be black then gray again then white again and then brown again so that order of play would stay the same with those ships and as i have said the cards you are buying are one set and the powers apply to all the ships also, the money that is being earned is going into one single pot for each player. What you will find is that this does mean that you buy those powers much quicker than normal. 
but by having the extra ships on the board, you still have enough conflict and areas you need to avoid. It's important to note that the rules with regards to attacking your own ships still do apply. So in normal Black Fleet, the Grey ship, for example, would not be able to attack his own merchant ship with his own pirate. And in this situation, he also wouldn't be able to attack the brown merchant ship. And of course, the same goes when they're controlling the Navy. They can't go, well, it's my brown turn. So I use the Navy ship to sink my grey to get me money. No, they are all your ships. You cannot attack your own ships. So that is how the house rule works. And if you're still not too sure on that, please do tune in for the next video where it will be a playthrough using that house rule. So that be how you play Black Fleet. Thanks me hearties for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video. <clears throat> I, can't, I really can't keep that up. Um, yeah, so I do hope you have found this video useful and I do hope that you will share it with your family and friends. And of course, please do subscribe to the channel and you can also find us on social media. We are on Facebook, which should be down here somewhere right now, and also on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.